When folks ask me if I think something's a good deal, it never is. Take a look for that. That's a discerning eye, but that's something that I really got accustomed to looking for because that's a nice upgrade. And so that can really sway, you know, the value of a price, the interpretation of a price based on that information. I used to buy and sell used tractors for a living, but I don't do it anymore. I got out of the game. But because of all the information I've put out there about all the used tractors that I used to sell, I get asked these questions all the time on, is this a good deal? Is that a good deal? Which one should I get between these five tractors? How do I know if I'm getting a good price? Well, there's no magic bullet, but I'm gonna give you the recipe. Everything that I used to make a living buying and selling used tractors. Now, whether you're looking to flip tractors or if you just wanna get a really good value and not get ripped off, not get taken, well, I don't have a skin in the game, so I'm gonna shoot you straight. First thing to talk about, pricing. All right, so the first thing you need to do is establish your baseline. And for me, that means determining what the price is when it's brand new. So the Summit tractor here equipped the way that you see it, well, with a bucket instead of forks, is $19,000 at this point in time. That will change with time. Now, on either side here of the camera, you have a 1025R, a Kubota BX23S. You can do the same thing. It's a little bit more challenging. If you go to their websites, you can build it out. You're gonna get the MSRP, which is essentially never what you're gonna pay for the tractor maybe five, 10, 15% less, depends on the economic conditions, depends on your dealer, your geographic area, all sorts of those variables. So what can you do? Go to a place like Tractor House. I've found that to be the most comprehensive collection of tractors that are out there. So new and used, you'll see a lot of dealers advertising their brand new tractors there, and they're gonna put a competitive price on there compared to the MSRP. They're trying to make it enticing for you to contact them to work out a deal. So the main thing that you need to focus on here is time. You're gonna have to invest your time, but this is where you can save your money and potentially save thousands. All right, and a little bit of background, I bought and sold tractors all over the country. And so I was able to buy tractors, maybe, I don't know, from Texas or Colorado or New York or Tennessee, wherever it was, had them freighted into me on a hot shot trailer, do everything I need to do, establish a retail price with delivery, and then ship them back out to a customer in one of these other states and make a buck. So there are thousands of dollars that you can save if you know what you're looking for. So stay with me here. This is the most time intensive part of the whole process, all right? But it's very important to make sure that you're not, well, you got to start off on the right foot. So now that we have an idea of what the new pricing is, you've picked out your, your tractor with whatever attachments you want on it. Maybe it's just a loader, maybe it's a loader and a mower, maybe a loader and a backhoe. Whatever it is, you've done your research, established the new pricing baseline. Now you can start researching used models, which are going to be cheaper, but very widely based on a lot of conditions that we're gonna talk about now. And this is where you gotta pay real close attention to the detail, or you might not find out like I did early on until you get one home and realize, ah. Oh, why didn't I think about that before I bought it? All right, so I did write down a lot of notes because I've kind of forgotten all the things that go into it. All right, so when we go through this list of, a big time list of things that you have to look for, all right, you're going to miss out on good deals. And that's part of the process. So as you keep looking at more and more tractors, kind of single those out, make them their own page, make a whole, I'll, sometimes I'd have a tab with 20 different tractors open, just kind of looking at it and, you refresh it on a daily basis or an hour basis or whatever you're doing, and you can see how quick some of these tractors get off the market and are sold. And so those opportunities missed will inform you. They're gonna make you smarter and know that you're on the right track finding what other folks also consider to be a good deal. And it's gonna improve your knowledge base. You're gonna get quicker at it. And then once you find a really good deal, you're gonna be confident to jump on it and move forward. All right, so the first thing I do when I'm looking for tractors, besides if there's a, a certain model number I want or whatever, it can be all tractors, it can be anything, is the hours. For me, reselling a tractor, I want low hours, all right? And so I did have a lot of dealers that would reach out to me that I established relationships with and took their trade-ins, and that became a lot easier, um, but it took a long time to get there. I never bought from auctions. I think those are just problem children waiting to happen. It's just not worth it. So I think buying from a dealer which is where I probably bought 90 or 95% of my tractors and still was able to earn a living. Um, just gives you a, well, it's not foolproof, but you get more confidence in it, right? That it's going to be a safe transaction that they're uh, potentially going to stand behind it, or um, at least maybe put it through an inspection or tell you what's wrong with it versus a, a private individual where there's a bit more risk involved. But typically I would search 
for sure under 500 hours. Oftentimes I'd really like to see equipment with under 300 hours. Not because I think that 500 hours means it's anywhere near the end of its usable life. Uh, just because I feel like, well, if you think you're about sitting on a machine for 500 hours, there's a lot of things that can just potentially go wrong. Um, not even so much mechanically, but more with the cosmetics, right? Maybe uh, something's damaged by accident. You know, a lot of compact tractors are owned by first time owners that maybe are just still learning the ropes. Um, so you have a couple hundred hours on there. It's just more likely for it to be in closer to new condition. Uh, warranty, okay, and tied into warranty is model year. So kind of just at face value, most tractors these days come with a six year powertrain warranty on them. And you can take a quick glance, you know, it's 2023 right now. So six years ago is 2017. You know, in general, a tractor from 2017 is pretty much out of any kind of warranty. Now there's some caveats there because if a tractor didn't sell in the beginning of 2017, maybe it sat on the lot back then for a year and a half. So it, the warranty doesn't kick in until it sells. All right. So it could have not been sold until 2018 at some point and maybe have some warranty left on there. So it's just kind of a general gauge. Um, always worth asking if there is any warranty left, both the bumper to bumper plus the powertrain and emissions too on most of the newer stuff. On that note, definitely not worth getting an extended warranty or buying some kind of aftermarket warranty. The likelihood of recuperating that cost, in my opinion, is really, really low. Um, tractors are robust. You know, if you do have a couple things that go wrong, maybe an axle seal and I don't even know. I mean, there, there's just not a lot that goes wrong with these tractors unless there's something very unusual that happens. I just roll with it. I don't, it's not a deal breaker for me to not have a warranty. Now, don't always trust what's written in the description of these listings of tractors that are for sale. Pay attention. Try to see the model numbers that are written. Um, try to look for visual clues of the different attachments uh, that are included, all right? And Certain models of tractors will have different kinds of loaders. You can get a non-self-leveling or a self-leveling. Self-leveling is always gonna be more money, so that is uh, gonna typically generate a higher price, okay? Mower decks, there could be different sizes of mower decks, 54, 60, 72. Uh, I know the John Deere 1 Series used to have a lot that were not auto-connect, and by that I mean with the auto-connect PTO. Most of them these days I feel like are or do include the auto connect PTO. So double check that, just point blank ask the dealer, does it have the auto connect PTO coupler on there as well? Not just the drive over uh, and connection arms on there. Oh, and besides even just non self leveling versus self leveling loaders, some tractor series will have different loader models that lift more weight, lift it higher. So they're gonna be a price difference there as well. So make sure you're, you know, you're educated about which loaders you can get. The John Deere 3R series, for example, there's two different loaders that you can get with that. Um, I think some Kubota models have that too, so just be aware. Tires are a big one, all right? These are the R14 tires that come standard on the Summit. Those are typically gonna be a premium or an upcharge on most tractor brands out there right now, if they're even available. I don't know if it's still the same way or not, but on the Kubota standard L series, like uh, the L3301, L3302, the R1 Ag tire, so those skinny, a little bit taller, like the farm style tires, were the cheapest option. And if you even wanted to go to a regular R4 industrial tire and rim, those were gonna cost you more money just to go to that. And if you're thinking, yeah, I'll get the tractor, I'll just swap out the wheels, swap out the tires later on, well, that's an expensive proposition. Typically, you'd have to get really lucky to find something on Facebook Marketplace or wherever and get a cheap swap out. So don't count on that. Make sure you get it set up with the wheels and the tires that you want. Okay, so now a quick list of things to visually look at that you, the smart shopper, can see and can clue in on. And if it doesn't list it out in the description, but you see it in the pictures, when you talk to that dealer, just verify to be sure. But what I would always do, I would always look for remotes, okay? The extra hydraulic functions like the Summit has, standard the extra function on the front to control a grapple that is not very common but has huge value same thing on the back side all right there's a rear remote on the back side of this tractor most tractors don't have that when you're looking around in those pictures on the backs of the tractor look for hydraulic outlets back here there are power beyond versus traditional scvs power beyond is going to be for something like a backhoe uh, a typical scv like this is going to control like a hydraulic top link or a, a hydraulic snowball or shoot rotation something like that but again, a lot of extra value that's gonna change the potential price point of the tractor or let you know, maybe for this price, wow, that's a really good value compared to something else. Quick attach up here on the loader, okay? More and more tractors are starting to come out standard 
with a quick attach, like a skid steer quick attach or a John Deere quick attach. But if you don't see a couple of levers up here, visibly in the pictures, make sure you verify. If you have a pinned on bucket, you are gonna regret it. I promise you that. Rule the tractor out if it has a pinned on bucket. You need to have a quick attach up here. I immediately move on if I don't see that option. Something else you're not gonna visibly see in pictures, but you should verify because it can cost you hundreds of dollars to do it later on. Liquid ballast inside the tires. The Summit comes with that standard from RimGuard. Again, we're sponsored by RimGuard for good reason. We promote tractor safety on this channel. Having all that extra weight, hundreds of pounds of extra weight on the back end of your tractor is gonna help stabilize it. Just for uneven property when you're using the front end loader, all kinds of things. Check out RimGuard at RimGuardSolutions.com. You can find the dealer near you. Uh, another one too, look and see if there's wheel weights. If they are, that's a nice bonus to have. Wheel weights are probably the most expensive form of ballast weight on the market out there. So if you do see a stack, a double stack, a triple stack of wheel weights in the back of that tractor, that's a nice bonus. Now take a look at the seat as well. Now, a lot of tractor series are not gonna have an air ride seat upgrade available, but like the John Deere 3 series, the 3R series, and the John Deere 4R series definitely do. And so it can be hard to see, but there's gonna be a little knob typically that you pull out and that's gonna be the indication. And you'll see some, oh, um, kind of like accordion style folded rubber flaps on there too. And that's gonna be for the, the expansion as it goes up and down as you fill it or release air out of the seat. But take a look for that. That's a discerning eye, but that's something that I really got accustomed to looking for because that's a nice upgrade. And years ago, it was like a thousand bucks. It's probably more than that now, but a very, kind of hard to find sneaky way to see if you're getting a better value on a tractor or not. And trust but verify is probably pretty important as well. Sometimes you'll see in pictures a tractor shown with other attachments, maybe like a snowblower or something on the three-point hitch. It's always worth verifying that those are actually included. And sometimes there's nothing else shown in the pictures, but if you read through the description, it will list other attachments that are included. And so that can really sway you know, the value of a price, the interpretation of a price based on that information. And so, you know, the point being, I could look at, I typically probably looked at over a thousand tractors to find one really good deal, okay? And they're hard to find, but you have to spend the time doing it. And whether you're doing this just to find the right tractor for you or you wanna give it a shot flipping tractors, the same premise applies. When folks ask me if I think something's a good deal, it never is right? Good deals aren't just hanging out there for weeks on end. Good deals are gone typically in a day or less. And so if you're sending me something that's out there for a month and you know, the dealers you're negotiating back and forth on what you can do, in my opinion, it's not a good deal, but that's because I have a different interpretation of what I think a good deal is versus just a, a whole hum deal. So folks, there you have it. There's no magic bullet. Like I said, it's really about just investing the time. And for a lot of you folks out there that haven't bought a tractor yet, well, you have that time. It's a big decision. It's tens of thousands of dollars, you know, especially by the time you add the attachments on top of just the tractor. The tractor's just kind of the base tool, right? You need all the attachments to get the work done. So it's worth putting in the time. You can potentially save thousands of dollars doing it the way that I did it. And I think that this method stands the test of time. Who knows, maybe I decide to get back into doing it. It's fun. For me, it was always, well, you know, I don't want to say, <laughs> I, I don't want to say like I was addicted to it, but it was fun to always find a, a deal and then have the proof be when I sold it and, and made a profit, right? So I, I got very good at this. I sold hundreds, bought and sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tractors uh, over the years and, and had a really good time and met a lot of great folks. But now we just sell tractor attachments. So when you do find the right tractor for you, we'd love the opportunity to help you out with the attachments. We can set you up with the right size for the front end loader, for the three-point hitch. You don't want something too heavy, too small, too wide, whatever it is. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. Oh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Summit, okay? I'm really happy to work with Summit. This is a brand new tractor here. They are selling tractors in a different format than everybody else is. Okay, this is a really good value coming with a lot of those things that we talked about that most tractors don't, like the rear remotes, the self-leveling loader, the liquid ballast in the rear tires, LED lights, a super comfortable seat at a really good price point, okay? It's just, if I was building out a tractor company myself, I'd go about it the same way Summit is, so give them a shot if you're looking new. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.